THX 1800 3-way active speaker system kit assembling instructions for assembling you need Phillips screwdriver type is PH1 full name S2 PH1 this is common standard and you need 2 mm hex technical standard is H2 it's 2 mm hex H2 in a home depot you can find uh, such kind of uh, sets uh, with the bits included those bits also contain those two millimeter hex and uh, p1 uh, uh, p1 bit it's here like a p1 bit and you can finish your projects based on those uh, cheap uh, china sets this one costs uh, about uh, seven euros step one with a phillips screwdriver or, or hex uh, there could be variations of the screws uh, based on the sourcing you should open the top cover to speed up I will use a little little machine put screws in secure location to finish a project you need boards two ice power 200 ace 2 and one ice power 1200 board open the cover it has a guides yeah. so you should do it vertically there are all accessories let's inspect accessories Two brackets, two aluminium brackets for rack mount. Two eight pole speak on connectors to modify your speakers. Four sticky feet in case you are not using rack mounts. Screws to secure 200. Ace two boards, screws to secure rack mounts, and two pairs of eight pole speak ons to make your passive speaker cable. Next step we should remove sides. There are hex screws and you need a hex screwdriver I mean opposite side and three screws in each side with a Phillips screwdriver Depending on sourcing, those could be Phillips or Hex. Anyway, you have both screwdrivers already in a, in a stock. Removing sides. For sides, there are standoffs for Ice Power 200 IS2. And uh, when you are assembling, you should locate those five screw holes to the front. Orientation. The large capacitor should go to the direction of those five holes. There are special cutouts in a heatsink where to secure a board. Position heatsink cutout to standoff and secure. and tighten the screws. There are 18 flash head screws to secure Ice Power 1200 Ice 2 board.
so that large transformer should be on the right side looking from the front. Keep with the fingers and move it until you see mounting holes. So, secure one. Secure diagonal. And now you can put it in convenient way and secure the rest of the screws. Don't tighten yet, just put in a place. Now tighten the screws and start with this part because there are eight high power MOSFETs and we need a good contact with the surface. mechanical part is done. The next step is interconnect the boards. Remove protective plastic. And we start with the left side. First we connect power connector. Then management signals. Then input and the key should face the board. Then, here is important, there is a upper side of 8 pole, 8 pole connector, upper should go to the upper side of the board, and the lower should go to the lower side of the board. We connecting speaker outputs. So, upper side of the 8 pole connector is going to upper side of the board, and lower side to the lower side to the board. Then secure in a place. There are guides. You should fit in a guides. Yeah. It is done. And then for a right side, it's easier. You can position it first. It's in a place. Power cord or the mains for a board. Input, key should face a board, and in the same, upper side going to the upper side of the board, and lower side to the lower side to the board of 8 eight pole connector. So those are in place. Now secure the mains for 1200 board. It's here. Mains. Fourteen pin connector and the wires should be looking from the front to the to the right side. And now connect I spare 2200 inputs. Key should face the board. Next, connect board outputs. Shorter one is going here. And longer one, there is no option to make a mistake, is going for the left side. Now we need the housekeeping and organized wires. Uh, we will use uh, zip stripes for that. And here it is important to keep those uh, 
output wires away from high noise areas and this is a high noise area where we have a switching mode transformer so we will put it away so two zip stripes is 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 okay for that yeah nice and tidy and we will do the same for a second channel and it seems we need one more here and one more here Excellent. Thermo sensor. Thermo sensor we should place somewhere. Where is this connector? Where is this connector? Between plate and heatsink. Yeah. Next thing, we should as much as possible separate inputs from outputs, so we do some tidy job here, you can see, now it's great, and here in the right side it's fine, and it's fine also here. Let's secure now sides or enclosure. To keep maximum tolerance, we will put it together on, only then secure screws. We will start with the hex screws. Now we can put it in a handy location and secure the rest of them. Now we have three screws. Phillips screws, sinker Phillips screws, and we will secure them as well. At this moment we are ready for a test and I'm typically I'm doing tests with a, with an open cover that I can see uh, tiny things here and uh, and uh, also uh, look uh, is everything uh, fine for example I don't like that uh, this wire is too close to the output I will do a little bit uh, tidiness here to make a distance maximum distance from between inputs and outputs for a minimum potential noise you can see and then we do visual visual inspections yeah so everything seems great and uh, things to remember that this upper side of connector is going to the upper side of the board in the same here upper side of the uh, connector is going to the upper side of the board this is one place where you can make a mistake upper side to upper side upper side to upper side then probably we should double check those small connectors do they sit tight here they are yeah, you can yeah all key locks are okay so technically we are ready to switch it on before switching on we should switch everything off good
interconnection and tests. You can see here is a low and low, and those are going for three and three pins. Mids are going for two, and high are going for for one. Here is a here's a legend. And uh, to make a test, uh, we are doing all tests with the real board before a ship MIG. So normally that is practically impossible to make a mistake. Um, but anyway, you can make some, uh, some test uh, unit first and uh, test that uh, everything with amplifier is working well. 12 volt trigger, when it's in off, that uh, in that moment when you switch on the mains, Amplifier will operate. If you switch it on, then in a moment when you switch on Amplifier, it will not operate until you not provide a 12 volt trigger here. Uh, it has very low consumption in a moment of, of uh, standby. It's about uh, 250 milliwatts and you can drive it remotely. How to test 12 volt trigger? You should provide 12 volts uh, with a TRS uh, 3.5 millimeter connector. Actually, you can provide between uh, 3 volts and 30 volts. So you can take a I don't know, 5 volt uh, battery or a 3 volt battery or 8, 8 volt battery and uh, test, uh, test uh, 12 volt uh, inputs as well. You don't need a real equipment to test it. So, you finish assembling, the last piece is to secure top cover. And in this case, to, to speed up the process, I will secure it with a cordless drill. And the last item, if you want to use it uh, as, a, as a standalone amplifier, you put here a sticky feet. In case you want to put it in a rack mount stand, then you secure with the five screws rack mounts. Congratulations, you finished the project.